products that I've used up literally over the last half a year. We've been moving um, from state to state, from country to country in the past half a year, maybe four months probably, and so I have had so many empty products that I've accumulated that I didn't take with me, but I took pictures of, so I will be showing those products up close on the screen as I talk about them. First product is this Kirkland Moist Flushable Wipes. I bought these for some reason thinking that they are makeup removing wipes. They are not, let me tell you that right now. They are more like a feminine hygiene. I guess it doesn't necessarily have to be feminine. It could be for men too, but they are more for use in the bathroom, if you know what I mean. You can also use them, you know, to wipe your hands or you know whatever but they are definitely not made to remove makeup i found that out very quickly but i have been liking them and found finding use for them i keep a bag right you know next to me when i do my makeup to wash my hands or wipe my hands away or wipe off any swatches or anything like that so i do like them they're just not for makeup removal which is kind of a bummer the next product is this eva nyc up all night volumizing spray I've never heard of this brand before. I got this spray in an Ipsy bag a while ago, and honestly, the only thing I love about this is the smell. It smells amazing. I don't know what the scent is, but it's kind of like an argon oil smell, but not really, or a Moroccan oil smell. It's just very luxurious. It says that it adds volume and texture and protects from heat styling. It might add up a little volume. I never really noticed a huge um, kind of improvement in my volume when I was using it. I just sprayed this on my wet hair just because I like the smell of it. It smells amazing. So if you guys want to give it a shot, definitely do. I just didn't notice that it gave me a whole lot of volume. This is the Avalon Organics Vitamin C Facial Serum. This is another great product. I've heard a long time ago that vitamin C is really good for your skin. So I gave this a try. I used this at night, kind of after I washed my face along without moisturizer. It felt really refreshing. It does have a bit of a vitamin C scent. I would definitely enjoy using that. This is the Instant Age Rewind uh, Dark Circle Eraser by Maybelline. Absolutely love this concealer. This particular one that I used up is in the shade Neutralizer and it gives you a very nice kind of a neutral, almost yellow um, shade. It covers dark circles really well, also brightens and lightens. I use this particularly under my eye area and I just love it. I've been out of this for quite some time and I've really been missing it. I think I've been going through many, many concealers for my under eye area and none of them have really been cutting it. So I'm definitely gonna have to come back and repurchase that one because I love that. I finally used up my MAC Painterly or matte paint pot and painterly. I probably have had this for like a year and a half before it ran out. I really like this for you know an eye shadow base. That's primarily what I used it as. Towards the end, it started drying out and became kind of rough, and so it was harder to spread it around my eye. But I definitely really, really like using that product. The only negative I would say is that there is a lot of less expensive products um, or eyeshadow primers that you could use for that purpose. So if you don't pay $20, you definitely have many, many alternatives. This is the Estee Lauder Double Wear Stay In Place Foundation. I'm just bummed that it ran out because I really love that foundation. It's a great, almost full coverage, you know, anti-shine matte foundation. If you want a little dewier finish, use a beauty blender, but I really, really enjoyed it. It'll last you all day. Just a great product. I'm going to definitely have to repurchase it. Next is the Laura Mercier Universal Invisible Loose Setting Powder. I've had this product also forever. I bought it probably two years ago. Used it really heavily out in the beginning. Then I took a break for it for some weird reason because I really love this powder. It's great to set your under eye. It's great to set your entire face. Um, the shade is universal, so it's literally white, but also translucent. It doesn't add any coverage, and I just love this product. It really smooths out your pores and wrinkles and fine lines, so another, you know, must repurchase item. I have used up the Origins uh, eye cream, and this is the Ginseng. I got this for, 
I believe Christmas last year from my mom and I used it uh, probably, I don't know, half a year ago. So it lasted me around six months. I used it only under makeup because it does have a very pink tint about, uh, uh, for, of it. Sorry, that made no sense. It has a pink tint to it. And I did write a blog post about uh, a line of Origins products that I bought. It's just a really great eye cream to use under your makeup because it does have a pink shade and it does help brighten the under eye, but it only brightens while you have it off. It doesn't have any long lasting brightening effect. I used up the Lancome, don't know how to pronounce this name, the Idol Ultra 24 Hour Foundation. Is it tint? Tint? Taint? I don't know. But also another great foundation. I have a full blown review specifically on this foundation, but I really enjoyed it. Go and watch the review so I don't have to tell you about it. This is the NYX HD Concealer and it is in porcelain. I repurchased one in fair, but I do like the porcelain one. It did seem like it would be way too bright for my skin tone. I'm an NC25 in MAC but it was actually really nice and I'm really missing kind of that really bright under eye look. So NYX HD concealer, concealers on their own are just great, but I really like that particular shade just because it gave me a lot of brightness under the eye. I used up a sample of the Dr. Brandt Microderm Abrasion Skin Exfoliant. It's just a kind of a face wash and it has really, really micro beads. I don't know if they're micro beads, you know, made out of plastic that are now illegal or if they're actually, actually made of something safer. Um, but I did enjoy it. It was really, really micro, small uh, size of the exfoliant. So I really do enjoy that. I don't like scrubs that are super gentle that it's like you're getting a pampered massage. I do like a little scrub to my um, exfoliating products. So I did enjoy that. This is the Real One Color Stay. I've had this too for a while. I finally made it a point to just use it consistently. So I would finally use it up just because it's been so long and I don't want it sitting there for too long, but it's a great makeup. Lasts very, very long, as you probably all know. I have a hard time finding a, sh well, a shade match for my skin, so this particular one was a little too pink for me, which kind of prevented me from wanting to use it, but just the product on its own is really great. This is the Youth Extend Eye Cream from Artistry. For those of you that don't know, Artistry is an Amway brand, and um, I am allergic to a lot of the eye creams from Amway. This one I found was kind of similar. If I use it really close to like my, you know, lash lines, it gets red. Um, nothing too dramatic, but it does get kind of red and puffy. So I did use it all up, but I just left it kind of around the eye area, not super close to my eyes. I think it's a great product. I did like the way my under eye area looked when I had it on. It does kind of smooth things out. Um, but if you have sensitive skin, maybe not the best idea. This is the Peter Thomas Roth Cucumber Gel Mask. I really, really enjoyed this. I don't know, I mean, it says that it's cooling and moisturizing, it always has all these amazing effects to it, but I just like the way it felt on my skin. I don't know if it had any super long-term, you know, benefits to my skin, but I did like the cooling effect, um, especially if you, you know, wear your makeup for all day and your skin is super tired. This is a great product to just put on your skin at the end of the day and kind of relax. NARS uh, Pro Prime Smudge Proof Eyeshadow Base. Another expensive eyeshadow primer that is great and works well, but I would not repurchase just because it's overpriced and there's plenty of great products available that are way cheaper. And another thing is this too kind of gets to me because when I was, when I used it up, I'm sure there was still a bunch of product left on the very bottom of the tube, but I wasn't able to get to it because it has a brush applicator, kind of like a mascara would. Um, you know, a tube like a mascara would. The brush wasn't like a mascara brush. It was felt tip or, what is it, dope but applicator. There we go. So, but that kind of got to me that I knew there was a lot more product inside left. I just couldn't access it. And I feel like there's just a lot of waste that way. So I wouldn't repurchase it. It's also around $20, I think. and. There's just no reason to spend that much money for a product like that. This is the Batiste Dry Shampoo. I really, really enjoyed this dry shampoo. I think it really works well. It doesn't give you a whole lot of volume like the Big Sexy Hair Dry Shampoo would, 
but it does take away the oils pretty darn well. And for $5.99, you can't go wrong. I usually get those at TJ Maxx or Marshalls. I think they're a little cheaper than you, they are at you know your drugstores. Um, but definitely a great dry shampoo. And this is the Cebu Eye Cream. I heard, I believe, Summer Soldania talk about this. And she said that she really liked it, but once she traveled with it, it went funky. It kind of almost like coagulate but the same thing happened to me when I purchased it and used it for a few weeks and it was great it has a really nice tightening and kind of firming effect while it's on and then we flew to Saipan and I started using it there and the liquid separated from the cream and the cream came out all beady and so I would have to shake it really 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 well every time I wanted to use it and it was still not the same so I don't think I would repurchase it just because I don't know if it does that after a few weeks or it's because you go up in elevation. So, um, kind of nice product, but I don't know what the deal is with that. This is the Sulfur Zinc Oxide Soap. I found this in Zaypan. I think it's a product made in the Philippines and it's a soap for your skin. It's specifically um, you know, marketed for acne and kind of skin condition. If you've seen my acne video, the thing that kind of brought my skin out of that whole mess was zinc oxide in desitin and baby butt cream. So when I saw that I was so super super excited because it has the same property and it's definitely um, you know nice to keep as a maintenance product. So if you wash your hair or your face with it every day, it helps kind of protect your skin from all the excessive oils that kind of collect in your pores. So I was super excited for that. This is the Reviva Eye Firming Cream. I purchased this at Vitacost. I loved using this. It's a great product. It's very moisturizing. That's the thing that I would probably love the most. It's very inexpensive, so I will definitely be repurchasing that, repurchasing that, and I would love to use that again. And finally, this is the Satinique Shampoo and Conditioner. This is another brand um, that is distributed by Amway. I'm not affiliated with Amway, by the way. I just have a close family member that is, and so sometimes when I get gifts, I get beauty products and you know hair care and makeup products by Amway. So I am in no way trying to push this one way or the other. This shampoo was actually pretty good. I did enjoy it. The hassle with that is that you do need to buy it through a distributor. So if you know someone, I would give it a shot. I think it was great moisturization, moisturizing shampoo and conditioner. It smells good. Really enjoyed it, but if you don't, it's just a hassle to get. So 